This past week, I attended the funeral for Ruth Lukey. Some of y'all may know who this person is. Others may not. Ruth was a member of Abiding Presence. She lived in San Antonio for about 30 years in a home for others that had uh, different abilities. Ruth had Down syndrome. She was a sweet, sweet soul. Um, and uh, if you ever came to one of the talent shows, Ruth would be up there with her clarinet playing music, and it was the cutest thing ever. Um, Ruth would read lessons for us on Sunday morning, um, and it was always a joy to have her volunteering that way. And every time I did a children's sermon, Ruth would come and sit right next to me and answer the questions with all the three- and five-year-olds. It, it was wonderful. But my favorite memory of Ruth is every Sunday morning at, at the 11 o'clock service, I would be up there reading the announcements, and Ruth would historically show up about five minutes late. I mean, she's in this group home. There's a lot of people that live there, and I'm sure it took them a long time to get everybody ready to get to where they needed to be. And so she would show up about five minutes late. But I'd be up here welcoming you all, and Ruth would be at the doorway going, I'm here! <laughs> and she'd walk all the way down and give me a hug during the announcements, and I'd walk her over and say, come on, you can sit with me, and we'd sit together. And she'd pull out the hymnal, and she'd start stacking papers where all the hymns were, and she would participate fully in the worship, singing and, and hugging and just loving on us. And... It was a wonderful service that I got to attend, and I got to remember our dear friend Ruth. Um, and the pastor told more stories about her that I didn't even know. Like, she was avid in, in Special Olympics, and she had so many medals. The table was buckling um, with all, these, all this shiny metal from Special Olympics. And apparently, she loved country music and line dancing, which I sure do wish I would have seen. Uh, she was a sweet, sweet soul. At the end of the service, as pastors, we say a few common lines that come at, at, at a funeral where we're commending this soul into God's hands. And, and uh, I've said it a lot of times, and I've heard it a lot of times, but for some reason it hit me different with Ruth. Because the pastor got up there and said, Receive into the arms of your mercy your beloved child Ruth, a sinner of your own redeeming. And I had to stop right there and think, I don't, I don't, Ruth wasn't a sinner. She was just a sweet little soul. She didn't have a mean bone in her body. You know, she was so nice and, and caring. And then I thought, she's also a human being. And I'm sure that she said and thought and did things that she wasn't proud of or that maybe she wished she hadn't have done and that she pulled away from God at times in her life too. So I'm sure she also participated in that same thing that we all do on a daily basis as well. And, and I saw her in a different way in that moment. But then he says, not only is she a sinner of your own redeeming, but a sheep of your fold, a lamb of your flock. And may she find those everlasting arms of your mercy. And that's when I realized she's both saint and sinner, just like every single one of us, saint and sinner. And we're reminded that she is part of this fold, this, this sheep, this flock that we are all a part of. And that at some point in time, we are called home to that shepherd. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Shepherd is mentioned a lot throughout the Bible. Um, in Genesis, they, they, they talk about shepherds. There's even a, a, a female shepherd in the Bible. And in Genesis 29, it's Rachel. And in Revelations, it talks about shepherds and sheep and flocks. So it's from the beginning to the end. There's a common theme about this shepherd. And today, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he's quoting Ezekiel 34, which is practically the same thing where Ezekiel's prophesying that, that God is like this shepherd that's going to take care of us and always watch after us. And then, of course, right in the middle of this, Psalm 23, and we're going to talk about the Lord is my shepherd here in a minute. But uh, shepherds are pretty important. In fact, the name pastor, the title of pastor, comes from the word shepherd. And uh, nothing more that I would love or y'all to just follow me around all day. Come on, let me, right? But uh, Kelly Fryer, who was an ELCA pastor, wrote this book, and, and I can't remember the title of it. I'm sure I'll figure it out later. But um, in it, she talks about, I'm not a, I'm not a shepherd. I'm a sheepdog. And I love that image that I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a sheepdog, not a, not a shepherd. And she goes on to explain that a sheepdog is just another four-legged animal, just like a sheep, but with a little bit of different training. And a sheepdog's main role is to keep the flock together because we're all following the the shepherd, that's right. So you have two sheepdogs that are working in tandem to keep you all together. So we are focused on the good shepherd. Jesus tells us in scripture today, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. I'm not like this hired hand that runs away. I'm going to lay my life down for the sheep. Now, the best way I understand this is I love my kids. 
and I would absolutely lay down my life for my kids. Not a question if, if, it, if it came to pass, and I know all of you, I see heads shaking. Of course, yeah, of course. I don't know if I'd do the same for your kids, though, you know, <laughs> right? I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's like, I mean, probably maybe for some, uh, but I, I don't know. I don't. That's the hired hand, right? That's it. That's the difference. The thing is, Jesus says, I'm this good shepherd, and I'm going to lay down my life for them all, for every single one of them, yours, mine, and ours, all of them. The hired hand sees the wolf coming and runs away. Now, this is an important part of Scripture because back then, if a shepherd found a, found a sheep that had been taken by a wolf, he's supposed to go and get that shepherd, I mean, get that sheep and take it back to the owner it's like the sense of honor, the sense of loyalty. It is the right thing to do to show him I did everything I could. But the hired hand sees the wolf coming and he's done. He just drops the staff and takes off. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own. My own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. This is about a relationship. This isn't about ownership. This isn't about telling us what to do. This is a relationship, he says. Like he's in this relationship with God we are in relationship with Jesus. What an amazing thing. Let that settle in for a second. And then right after that, he says something that at first glance, I'm like, yeah. He says, there are other sheep that do not belong to this fold. Yeah. Yeah, I can name a bunch of them that don't belong to this fold. I know a bunch of people that aren't, aren't, aren't supposed to be coming into this fold. And, and I'm sure we all know them. They're driving on 281 sometimes. They're in the grocery store and the kids are yelling and they're treating them poorly. And I'm just like, oh. Man, Jesus, you need to help them. There's plenty of people that we consider that don't belong to the fold. And Christ tells us in this lesson, I must bring them also. This was written at a time whenever there were different factions in the church. In the temple, you had Jewish people that, that were waiting for the Messiah, that were living their life in light of the commandments, that were honoring Yahweh. And then you had this other faction of Jewish people that were doing all of those same things, but they believed that Jesus was the Messiah, and these two were diametrically opposed, and they were not allowed into the temple, and they were forcing them out of the temple. And then you had a whole other group called Gentiles. And Jesus is looking at all of us saying, I must bring them too. They will know my voice. And they will hear the voice of Christ, the voice of the Good Shepherd, the voice of God. Who are we to deny them that? And the ultimate reason he says this is so that there will be one flock and one shepherd. Talk about all are welcome, right? I think Jesus kind of pulled this concept of one flock and one shepherd off of Psalm 23. It's in your bulletin. You can pull it out and look it up. Um, but this is probably one of the Psalms that we all know. It's probably one of the chapters of any Bible uh, 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 um, book that we're like, yeah, I know that one, right? We've heard it at funerals before. It's, 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 it's been used in church. And, and if you're a Clint Eastwood fan, it was in Any Which Way But Loose. You know, it's an obscure reference, but it keeps popping into my head. Um, right turn, Clyde, right? Uh, so this beautiful psalm was written to a group of people that were struggling. To, Where's God in all of this? Bad things keep happening. Where is God? Maybe it's part of the exile. Maybe it's part of the exodus. But these people are wondering, where is God in all this? And the psalmist cries out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, this is that, that Elizabethan English, the, the, the King James version of it, um, that we probably all know by heart more than the more modern translations. But it doesn't really translate well for us today, I shall not want. It's like, that's a strange way of, 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 of listing it. But I, I, I heard it described as, I shall not desire, I shall not, I'll lack for nothing. But my favorite description is, what else is there? The Lord is my shepherd. What else is there? What a great way of understanding it. I just like, yes. And then the rest of it talks about what this shepherd does. He leads me beside still waters. He, 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 he what is the green pastures? He, he makes, makes me lie down. He leads me and he makes me. It's almost as if you're being forced to do this thing. But it's peace. It's tranquility. It's serenity. It's beauty. And this is what the Lord does makes us lie down in green pastures, leads us beside still waters. This Lord restores our soul and guides us in right pathways. The word was righteousness, being that right relationship, that this shepherd makes sure that we are in this beautiful relationship with God the Father and Jesus, with Jesus in us, that we are restored to this relationship. That is our soul, all these beautiful things. 
Um, and then it, then it comes to the part where we, we start to take charge, where it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Notice that it's not the Lord walking us. It's not the, not the shepherd moving us. I'm doing this. I'm walking through this valley. And I, that's my mortality. And it's not death. It's the shadow of death. We can understand it as that we're always thinking about someday I'm going to die and that that's going to happen. And so I'm going to try to live my life as best as I can with as much as I can and doing all the things that I can because I'm ca caught up in the shadow. I'm caught up in this valley. I'm caught up in this depression that I forget that the shepherd's leading me. And even though I'm in this darkness, even though I'm in this darkness, I'm, I'm pulled out of this for thou art with me. I can fear nothing. I fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they guide me. And the best example I have of this is, you've been bowling before, right? Yes or no? I mean, anybody bowl? Okay, good. You ever use the bumpers? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Putting those bumpers up on bowling, you just throw it down there, I'm going to hit something, right? That's the rod and the staff right there. That keeps us in line. There's no way we can get off of this path. Even though I walk through that valley, that shadow, that I'm caught up in that depression, that I'm caught up in my mortality that I'm, I'm crazy and, and nervous about dying, which doesn't happen to people that are on their deathbeds, people that are older, that are lying there, they're saying, I can't wait to meet Jesus. And it's hard to understand as children, how does that even, how do, how do we do that? But they're, in that, they're out of that valley. They're looking at their Lord. They're looking at their Savior. They're looking at that shepherd that's taking them, fear no evil, that's, that's guiding them along this right pathway, that's got the rod and the staff comforting them, and then the next part talks about this table with the enemy sitting at it. And I got to tell you, man, I don't like this part. I don't, I don't like it because it says, you prepare the table. The shepherd's preparing the table in the presence of my enemies. And I'm like, why do I got to be a crush on the person I hate the most? Why are you putting them in front of me? But then it tells me, you're anointed with oil. Your cup's overflowing. And my understanding of this scripture is that way. That person that sits apart from me, that I think is the worst person in the world, is going to find a shepherd that's going to accept them too through me, through this goodness that's overflowing from me, from this anointing that I have, that I am going to show this person, this shepherd. We talk about that in service to others. And then it says that goodness and mercy, that's going to follow me everywhere I go. If I'm, if I'm finding that peace and that tranquility that the shepherd's given me, if I'm being guided along these right pathways, if I'm sitting in front of the people that I dislike the most and just being willing to let them see God through me, there's goodness. There's mercy. We were created to be good in creation. Jesus is the good shepherd, and we get to share that with others all the days of my life, and I will rest in the house of my Lord at the very end. We have ability to do that today. There's going to come a day when we're called home. Oh, but that, that, that day will come. We can't fight that. We can't change that. We are mortal. But we don't have to fear that day. Because when that comes, we get to join Ruth, who just walked into heaven with her arm raised up and says, I'm here! <laughs> and she ran into the arms of her shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. What else is there? Amen.